the ruler of dreamland today's character breakdown is king ddd whose first appearance was in kirby's dreamland for the game boy way back in 1992. some fun facts about our penguin king he's voiced by none other than masahiro sakurai the creator himself while ddd is the primary antagonist he's not necessarily evil and King DDD ranked number one on a character inclusion poll for Super Smash Bros. Brawl in Japan. What's up, YouTube? I'm Chalkedbus, and today we're breaking down the master of the suck and cuck. There was an insane amount of requests for DDD this week, so here he is. Remember, this is a weekly series, and we break down a new character every Friday, so let me know in the comments section who you would like to see next. Honestly, I think there's going to be an overwhelming response for Piranha Plant, so we'll probably end up doing that next week. Alright, let's start the breakdown. It is hammer time. Okay, neutrals. King DDD has really good neutrals. If you get close to your enemy and you just hold the A button, he'll do his, uh, his two swing with the, the hammer into a spinning hammer attack, and then if you let go, he will knock you up. Now, if you're not next to your opponent, you can just hammer away. Haha, <laughs> get it? Because King DDD... Anyway, he'll spin his hammer if you hit it a couple times, even if you're not next to your opponent. King DDD's dash attack is really good because it will kill at, let's see, uh, pretty low damage. So I think we go to like 60. Mega Man's pretty light, so this actually might kill him. Let's see. It's almost, maybe it's 70, but it's really strong. You know, you kind of just, uh, you kind of just belly flop onto your opponent. Look at that, that's insane. So King DDD's dash attack is probably one of my favorite dash attacks in the game just for the sole reason that he looks like he just completely gives up and drops his entire weight on you and he'll knock you out ddd's smashes are brutal but particularly his forward smash it's slow but it packs a punch and you want to make sure you're not hitting with the hilt of the hammer or the handle the hilt <laughs> back up was what i'm saying don't stand too close but uh it does have a sweet spot so if you're on top of your enemy at 50%, it won't kill if you're all the way up there. I think if you're also too far, so that was the that was the sweet spot, but I think if you're too far, yeah, it won't kill either. So you want to make sure that mallet is coming crashing down right on top of Mega Man for the kill. But his forward smash is the most powerful of the three smashes. It'll kill 50% on some lighter characters. I don't even know if they can DI out of that. Hang on, let's go down to other settings. Turn CPU shuffling onto high. Let's see. No, he's he's gonna die at 80. The down smash is nice for clearing. It's also the weakest of the three smashes, but the circle that uh, hits both sides is nice. For the last of the smashes, we have his up smash, which is good. It's his overhead swing. I think it gives DDD some, uh, some good coverage overhead. It also combos nicely at a down throw at lower percentages. And if you're feeling fancy, you can even throw in a up tilt before the up smash. So at lower percentages, you can do down throw into up tilt into up smash. Let's talk special attacks. We have King DDD's neutral B, which is his inhale. You can use it to suck in some enemies for quick crowd control. You could also cheese someone <laughs> off the ledge if you're that type of player. You seem like that type of player. But it's especially useful for sucking up projectiles and firing them back. So let's make Mega Man do his side smash. Let's see, we'll suck it up, we'll spit it right back, and you can actually kill with it, which is awesome. But use DDD's inhale for those projectile spammers so you can fire it right back at them. Side B throws out a Goro. Now, you have to be careful because these have zero priority and a stiff wind will knock them back at you. Simply hitting side B will fire off a Gordo across the map, but here's the cool thing about it. If you hit side B and then quarter circle the control stick upward, it'll keep Gordo close to DDD. Now this could be used as a zoning tactic, or you can use it as a projectile in combination with his neutral B to suck up and spit back out. You can also play with the bounce heights by uh, by doing a, a double jump and using it, because it'll make the Gordo bounce a lot higher, so you can time it differently, or if you just use it on the ground or from a single jump, it's gonna have the same bounce height. It's important to note that DDD won't take damage from Gordo unless your opponent collides with it and knocks it back. But like I said, it's very easy to knock back, it has no priority, so you do have to be careful, but use his side B into an upward tilt to keep it close and suck and cuck until your uh, your heart is content. 
DDD's up B is his super jump, which is one of the best recoveries in the game, especially because DDD has multiple jumps before he can use his super jump. You know, he can recover from basically anywhere on the map. Now, when you're off the map and using a super jump, honestly, I would wait till you're down here to use it because you can still recover. And if you're playing against aggressive edge guarders, they're not going to chase you so far down under the map. So don't use it up here where you have that split second where you're vulnerable and they could hit you with a, a down air and spike you or forward air or back, whatever. Wait for your opponent to back off and then use your shoot. Super, super jump to recover because it has so much height. A couple other things about it, it does spike. So if you are able to catch your opponent with it, I mean, it's not the easiest thing to do, but uh, it does have spiking properties. So you knock your opponent off. Let's see, can we hit Mega Man with it right now? It's gonna take a, it's gonna take a try or two, but if you hit him close to the ledge, if you hit him close to the ledge, let's try again. It'll spike him down. If you land on the map, it does have some splash damage with the stars, but you want to use it very minimally because if you're playing against someone who's experienced, if they dodge it, you know, there's a lot of landing lag, so you're going to be wide open to be punished. It's also important to note that once you're at a fixed height, you can cancel the super jump by hitting B again. So if you jump and you hit B again, as soon as it gets to that fixed height, which seems to be almost the height of it, he'll do this uh, tumble and come down. But you will be open, so... If you do your super jump and you cancel it, you can't do anything after that. You can't air dodge, you can't attack, you can't do anything. So you're wide open for an attack. You have down B, which is DDD's jet hammer, which is chargeable, but after a while he's gonna start taking damage. A fully charged jet hammer can actually break a shield. Uh, it can also kill at, I don't know, maybe like 60% damage. So it's pretty strong, but Keep in mind that you're going to have very limited mobility while using it, so you want to be careful. On to tilts. DDD has a great set of tilts. This is down tilt is this roll, covers some nice distance. Also, early on, you could almost chain it, which is nice, and uh, you can just lay down and chill like some seductive Jeff Goldblum until you feel like rolling. I like to use down tilts out of nares because it's a decent quick combo at lower percentages. So you can nair, or you can nair or you can nair down tilt, sorry. <laughs> you gotta make sure you hit him on the right side or you're gonna knock him back. So once more, nair into down tilt, because there's almost no landing lag on that nair. His up tilt is this headbutt. It's great and it's stackable at lower percentages, so you can combo it out of a down throw into an up smash. It's also a good juggle tool. So like I said, I showed you earlier, but you can do down throw right into up tilt at lower percentages. Also, if you have someone overhead, or if you're playing a battlefield level in his platforms, it's good for juggling. Last tilt you have is forward tilt, which is the best of the three, no doubt. It has amazing range, it has no hurt box, so you can zone your opponents. It's also really good for edge guarding, and there's little risk of taking damage. Now, unfortunately, I don't think there's any true combos out of any of DDD's throws into a forward tilt, but regardless, Use it a lot, because it's fantastic. Okay, time to talk about air attacks. This is where King DDD shines, especially for heavy. His air attacks are all great, but we're going to talk about them individually, starting with the neutral air, or nair, which is similar to King K. Rules. I mean, well, technically, King K. Rules is similar to DDD's, because he came first, but it's fast. You could fast fall out of it, and nair is also a great combo starter into down or up tilts which uh, you can then combo into up airs or up smashes. So I like to do Nair fast fall into a down tilt if we can hit it. If we can hit it. There we go. Um, but I think it's better into an up tilt, to be honest, because then you can just start chaining it. You could do two in a row. So we do Nair up tilt, up tilt into up air. But it has almost no landing leg, so you can do a lot out of it. Forward air is this downward hammer swing. It's not the best air attack out of a short hop, but it's great for some offstage play. It hurts, and it's quick, which is what matters. I don't think it'll kill until around 120%, so it's probably not the best air attack in his arsenal, but it's quite good. And at higher damages, you can combo it out of a down throw. So let's bring Mega Man up to 40. And I think here, yeah, you could get a... You could get a forward air right out of a down throw around like, I don't know, 40%, maybe even higher. But at lower damages, it's it's harder to do because you're not bouncing them as high with the down throw. 
it's still doable, don't get me wrong, but I would use something else. Down air is a meteor smash. Now, you could short hop into it if you want, uh, but the wind up is a bunch of frames, so you're gonna have to work on the timing. Now, I think King DDD has a lot of excellent kill confirms, and while it's always nice to have a spike, I think this one's probably bottom of the list for me. Like I said, it does spike if it's nice, but I just, I think King DDD has so many better options when it comes to confirming a KO. His back air is really good for picking up kills. Uh, it's similar in speed to DDD's forward air, but instead of swinging the hammer downward, he's going to swing it across. Now, it's also a lot stronger than his forward air, so you can get a kill probably under 100% on smaller or lighter characters. Uh, and I think it combos nicely out of a down throw, so you could do down throw, pivot, back throw, or back, uh, sorry, back air, and knock them out. So one more time, grab, down throw, pivot, back air, and you can pick up kills on lighter characters with it. King DDD's up air is this upward hammer spin, which is similar to his forward tilt, just in the sense that it's another multi-hit attack, but it's a really good juggling tool, and it combos really nicely out of an up throw, so you could do up throw right into up air. Another really good use for DDD's up air is to counter ledge guarding or someone who's ledge trapping you. So if you're kind of stuck over here, someone keeps knocking you off, use your up air to counter that. You can get some attacks in there to get them to back off. Also, the attack will go through the stage. So if someone is ledge trapping you, you know, you can kind of hang out down here, you can bounce around a little bit because DDD has multiple jumps. He has one of the best recoveries in the game, so it's very low risk. Yeah, just to show you on Mega Man. So if Mega Man's over here, he's ledge trapping me. I can get him, whoops, I can get him through the stage, which is nice. And you can get him with a pretty hefty attack too. Last up, we're gonna talk about King DDD's throws. Now, all of his throws are good, but God, do I miss his chain grab from Brawl. It was one of the reasons why I mained him back in Brawl, but it's probably for the best that it's gone. Now, you have his down throw, you have his up throw, you have his forward throw, and then you have his back throw. I think his best two combo starters are definitely his down throw and his up throw. Like I showed you earlier, his down throw combos really nicely into up tilt, up smash. You can combo down throw into forward air. Even at higher damages, you can combo down throw into nair. Or that's not a nair. Combo down throw into nair. And then you have his up throw, which combos really nicely into his up air. And then you have his back and forward throws, which I think are really good for creating space and gaining crowd control. Especially if you can knock your opponent off the stage, because that's where King DDD is really going to do his thing. So forward throw off the stage, and then from there, you know, you can chase him out. Forward air, forward air, nair, down air, whatever you want. So that's it, another character breakdown in the books. Like I said, this is a weekly series, so let me know in the comment section if there's any characters you wanna see next week specifically. Also, feel free to go back and check out some of my other character breakdowns, but honestly, King DDD is so much fun to play. Uh, he's probably one of the first heavies I picked up back in Brawl, and if you've been shying away from playing heavies, I recommend picking King DDD up. He has a very unique move set. He has good range. He's great in the air. And just overall, he's so much fun to use. Now go forth, play some King DDD, and crush your enemies with that hammer. But if you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button. It helps out a lot more than you think it does. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. I do weekly character breakdowns, like I said. I also do a ton of other Smash content, you know, both fun, competitive, whatever, everything in between. I also cover a lot of other Nintendo games, so if that's your cup of tea, make sure you subscribe for more. But thanks for watching. I do stream as well on Twitch if you want to catch some of my Twitch streams or follow me on Twitter. Links are in the description below, but thanks for watching. Have an awesome day, and we will catch you in the next one. Later.